Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Today we're diving back into real estate and we're going to be talking about a pretty important topic in this day and age, and that is how to win your bid offer when you're buying a home. Let's get into it. Okay, so like I said, we are going to be giving you guys some tactics today on how to win your bid offers when you're trying to buy homes. Again, we're in the 2021 housing crisis, if we can label it that way. It's very difficult to buy a home. You're paying a lot over asking. You're going up against 20 other people bidding for the same home. We need some additional tactics for you guys that will bring you to the next level and really help you stand out against all those other bids. So again, my name is Scott. I'm a side hustle specialist. We're with Steve Graber, who's your real estate go-to guy as well as David Stroud, who is going to help you get the money that you need to make your bid really stand out. So gentlemen, let's chit chat a little bit about this today. What are some of the things, maybe Steve, you can start as a real estate agent that you've seen really make offers stand out, something that a client should be pushing, maybe even our audience, pushing their real estate agent to do so that they can win? Yeah, I, it's a great question. I think the thing that I found that works the best for me, almost more than anything, is trying to establish, when possible, a relationship with the other agent. If you can establish a relationship with the other agent, the agent already has trust within, within you. And one thing that I'm always asking the other agent, and it's pretty consistently asked, is what is it that would be that dream offer that the seller would want? A dream offer, or you know, what would be the ideal situation for um, for the seller? Because if you can speak to the seller the needs that they've got, that makes a huge difference. I mean, there's a lot of tactics tactics that you have, but really getting into that mindset of the seller will help you speak directly to that. So um, I, I found a lot of times for my clients, if they can be flexible, if at all possible. Because if the seller needs to have a, a late close or an early close, can my clients be flexible in any way? So I prep my clients ahead of time to make sure that they're ready to go with that. And on top of that, I give them other tools. I rarely advise and it's, you know, waiving the inspection. That's possible to do. I don't advise that in any way. Um, there's things like the appraisal gap, which I think is something where, you know, if the appraisal is going to be way up there, you may need to just waive the entire appraisal. Um, additional gap, the fee between what it actually appraises out versus what it actually went for. So those kinds of things. And again, just being flexible, but really listening more than anything is the biggest thing that I found. Okay. So relationship, super important. Obviously a lot of communication with the selling agent. At this point, they're getting probably tons of com communication from a lot of different people really wanting to win bids. So again, what you're saying is, is really to, uh, to help stand out, you're asking for dream offers, do the best that you can to match that. And again, I really like what you said, don't compromise on things like inspection. Like it's, you really could win a bid and then all of a sudden be stuck in a property that is just way, way, basically a money pit because you guys didn't go through that inspection process. Scott, the only thing you can do, bring an inspector with you, possibly. If it's a house that you really like or somebody that really knows their stuff, that may help you out uh, along the way. Things that people that are kind of with a trained eye to know if that works or not. But what it turns out to be the path of least resistance. That's a super good idea. I actually have an inspector that we work with uh, at eXp who has told me, hey, if you want me to just walk along with you guys, I'll do it for 25 bucks which is a steal, but what he's doing is he's actually offering his services, his face, his relationship with you, so that when it does come time to actual inspections, you're gonna go back to him for his business. So if you guys are real estate agents out there, if you guys are buyers out there, maybe look around, talk to some inspectors, see if they're willing to do it for that cheap, kind of tag along with you and really help bring uh, their specialty, their eyes to the property. Um, okay, well, let's talk money because that's great in, as far as extra little tactics that your, you and your agent can be doing to grab homes. But David, let's talk about the money because I think, I think you'll agree with this. Money is the thing that's actually going to win, right? What do, what do you think? Yeah, 
Often it is, and we try to do lots of different things. I think that relationship is definitely important, just as Steve mentioned. So if, if you're a realtor out there and you have a relationship with another lender, then I would suggest reaching out to that lender and asking that lender to go and to vouch for you to the other agent. Say, hey, look, not only is the client prepared and ready to go, and they've you know, marked off all the things on the list, but the agent that we have right here is super great at communicating. They're really good at negotiating and they're not going to be someone who's just going to disappear and rely on you to do all the work so they can still get their commission. So I think that's really important too. But when it gets to the money, I think we try all these different things. But right now what I'm seeing is that most people, they're like, yeah, that's nice. We can close early or yeah, that's nice for this thing. But you know, it's, it's, I think it's based on fear and greed and people want to have lots of money. Uh, and they know that if they're selling their home, they need to have money to buy that next house. And so I have a really, really cool tool that can help you uh, see what is the right amount to offer. If offering more than the asking price is what you think is going to help you and your client to win this bid, then this is the tool that can help you get there. It's a bid over asking price tool, but then that comes into play what's too much, right? I mean, you don't want to offer too much and then something happened and you need to move or your client needs to leave and suddenly they don't have the ability to recoup their investment. So let me share a real quick tool with you guys that has helped many of my clients. And so the way this tool works, this is this bid over asking price tool. This is a scenario that happened just last weekend in our area in Colorado. So uh, there are two properties that a client wanted to look at. One was for 388, one was for 395. And we were wondering what would happen if we offered $20,000 over the asking price. So we had that listed here and then we kind of see like what would happen in the end for them. So if they really want to find out what's the break even point. And for this property, for property A, we scroll over. In five years, this is the forecast of what's going to happen to the property, but the break-even point is going to be 25 months. And that's based off of the time that the property was purchased and the price that was paid for when it was purchased by the current owner. But then we look at this other property, property B, same appreciated value, but we look at it, we're looking at five months. And so it really helps you to see like maybe $20,000 isn't enough to win this property. Maybe I need to offer more and maybe 20,000 is too much for this property and I should offer less based on what your circumstances are, especially if you know you're in the military and you might need to move in two years or so, then maybe that doesn't work. And this gives a graph, kind of a scale for you to see what that appreciated value of the home would be. So yeah, super quick, easy tool. If you don't have, your lender is not helping you, it doesn't provide these sort of tools, then um, maybe find one that can. The money is usually made and where you get the best deal, it's always made at the offer. You always knew to make sure that you were prepared, like with what you're doing, because that's where it all happens. I mean, because once you're in the house, you're in the house. So, so make sure you do your due diligence. Make sure you work with your lender to get that figured out right away. Absolutely. I mean, I've heard of many times that said you make your money not when you sell your house. You make your money when you buy your house, because that's yeah. when you're in total control. You can say yes or no. But once you're trying to sell your house, like, you know, like kind of, it is what it is. It's worth what it's worth. Right. So for those people that are selling right now. Maybe it's a little bit of a different world for them, but yeah, I completely, completely agree. All right. Well, there you go, friends. A couple of tips and tricks as well as tools that you can use when you basically, it comes down to the money and you just need to offer enough to really outbid everybody else. How much can you afford? Well, there's tools out there that can help. David can help you out. Uh, again, honestly, friends, we're here. If you guys are not using your agent or your mortgage specialist in this capacity, do it. These are tips and tricks that we are really encouraging you guys to go after regardless of who you use. If you're looking for someone who can answer questions, maybe you're in the Colorado area and you really want a real estate specialist or a mortgage specialist to talk to as you're preparing for the buying process, friends, check out the description box below. Our email address is right there. We'd love to talk to you. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. We're actually gonna be doing real estate stuff quite often. Stay tuned for the channel for overall wealth building tips and tricks. We've got a lot of stuff to share. And you guys know what to do as always. Hit that thumbs up button if this has helped. Subscribe and then hit that bell notification so you guys know when our latest video drops. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you again on the next one.